Karen, back to you. Thanks, Carrie. Well, the situation with TEPCO, of course, means that the nuclear debate continues. The IAEA meeting underway this week in Vienna. And the big question of the meeting, where members can address possible changes in regulation of nuclear industries. You can bet Fukushima and its impact is on the agenda. Well, let's welcome around the set here today Vasilios Agalidis, who is director of the Australian Energy Research Institute at the University of New South Wales, all the way up from my home country. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Karen. Um, you know, we've heard reports already from the IAEA calling for more stress testing of existing nuclear facilities, but what is the point when they can't reinforce any regulation? I guess, Karen, you hit right, right there at the, at the point. The, the point is that the International Atomic Energy Agency was established uh, after the Second World War to look after the applications of nuclear energy only for peaceful purposes. So he has done this, this, this role quite well, in my opinion. But we have to move on and now see actually another area that they have to take responsibility. And that is the, re the review, the evaluation and the implementation of safety standards and of course systems in place, uh, including emergency responses for accidents like the one we have seen in Fukushima. At the moment, it, it, the responsibility lies on its country. So the agency has no way, there's, a, there's no mandate for the agency to enforce the safety standards or to even review them. And in this case, actually, of course, it is required. Well, alarmingly, it is the developing nations that are scaling up when it comes to nuclear plants, but the developed nations that are starting to shun nuclear power. So if these international standards come into place, there would seemingly be a lot of, uh, you know, support from consumers worried about the standards that these countries have. That's a very serious point because uh, we see, for example, Germany starting their nuclear uh, stations by 2022 and Italy voted against the nuclear uh, energy if, to take it further uh, and of course Switzerland is also looking into that as well. So you're right that the, the developed countries are actually looking at wake, walking away from nuclear energy and of course countries on, on the other side of the spectrum, on the economic spectrum I should say, are looking into embracing that. So the, the, the danger of actually we're walking into the situation where the, the standards are in place but are not implemented properly because the systems are not as robust as, for example, the ones in Japan or Germany or other developed countries will create, I suppose, in a situation in the future that will not be uh, only for the one single state, it will not be regional, but it will mm -hmm. be also be global. So that, that, that's where the, the problem lies. Nuclear energy issues are global. They are not actually state issues or regional issues. But it, but, but it has become a, a political football, though, Basilio. Uh, Basilio, this is pretty, uh, your friend up here in Hong Kong, by the way. Um, you know, I mean, a, a, a brand spanking new atomic plant built with the, uh, you know, to the most stringent code and with the, uh, you know, the, uh, the utmost, uh, uh, you know, knowledge of seismic activity that may go on nearby is very different than something that was built in the late 60s that was commissioned uh, in the early 70s, as was in the case of Fukushima uh, Daiichi. Uh, doesn't there need to be some standard that, you know, like maybe like Merkel, her first step was to close down the older plants and then she lurched in the opposite direction. Did she have something going with that, with, with the, with the initial plan. Yeah, well, uh, the report that came out uh, through the conference that we have seen this, this week in, in Vienna, the, 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 it highlighted some shortcomings, and one of them was, of course, that the, uh, uh, the, the, the underestimated uh, factor of the tsunami effect on this particular plant. And, of course, it's an old plant, so they, they, they have done that, I suppose, mistake. So we have to look into that. And also the, the plants themselves are sitting on an earthquake zone, so there are a combination of issues there. And, of course, we have seen the most unfortunate uh, cause of events happening. The first, the earthquake, which was of unprecedented magnitude, and followed up with the tsunami, which is again was of an unprecedented magnitude. So in that case, we had a combination, and that, of course, is, has been so complex to deal with. But what is, what is the issue is that, that we have to look at other sources of energy, as we discussed in previous times, uh, Bernie, and look, for example, in Japan. Japan has no choice. Uh, there is no resources there, so maybe they should look into gas, for example, which are less, less complicated like the nuclear energy they're pursuing and so on. Thank you for joining us. Vasilios Agalidis, who is Director of Australian Energy Research Institute. Now, we have some breaking news just crossing around Qantas, and don't forget the shares have been on a hold pending a, pending a material announcement. Um, Matt, this seems to be related to a commercial agreement with Rolls-Royce about the grounding of the A380 flight. But